Well, guess what? We made it. We're making it to eight o'clock. Jody and Sharon. Um, yeah, if you want to just step back right over there, uh, the camera does a wide angle. But um, we just want to say, uh, you know, thank you to everybody out there. It's eight o'clock in the morning, uh, Ely time, and we are in uh, wonderful shape here. We're moving along. We got a what? Twenty-two thousand nine hundred dollars right now, and we're sitting at how many uh, donations was there so far? Well over 700 donations, so we're doing good. We just uh, needed to keep digging in there. But right now, uh, we want to talk about there's going to be an extreme special event at 1 o'clock. We're not told what, but we're told that everybody needs to tune in at 1 o'clock because very important time. That's Ely time, 1 o'clock, and we're going to be bringing it up to you, but you need to tune in at 1 o'clock for a very, very special event that we're going to have, and it's super special. Now, not as special as Lynn and Donna are, Dr. Rogers and Donna, but it's it's still extremely special in another way, um, we're told. So it's a secret to all of us until we find out, but not even Dr. Rogers knows. So with that note, should we invite them over? I, I think so. I, I think so. I think he's antsy and ready to go, don't you? Ready. And Donna and Lynn, come on over. Sit down with the two bears. Yeah. I know what the special event is. You do? I do. Yeah. Oh, okay. Lynn's going to play his trombone. <laughs> well, I thought maybe he was going to take you out to. I thought maybe he was going to take you out to dinner somewhere other than Zoops. <laughs> or North and Market. Or, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, they do say restaurant on the front, though. You know, so <laughs> are we going to get into this right away? I don't like it. Sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's really super great to have these two here. I know that uh, uh, Lynn, you hurried here, and Donna actually left us a really super special treat last night. We want to thank you for that. And she had this wonderful note that she left us. I did. I I, I was just busting laughing. She left us a comic book of uh, what was it? SpongeBob, and she Sponge Bear. There's a Sponge Bear. No, no, not at all. But um, we just want you guys kind of talk about your start at the North American Bear Center. Really, really, not how how Donna how Donna reacted to when you said to her, "I want to do a uh, bear center." stories if I if I don't get carried away but uh, yeah <laughs> came a time when we'd been meeting monthly uh, to see if we could put together a bear center for 10 years and uh, and we just seemed to be getting nowhere and then while money was the big problem we just weren't raising any money and so uh, then Anyway, Don and I got talking, and honey, would you stand by me in having this dream come true? And she saw, she said, I, it, I know it's very important to you, it's important to me, she said. And uh, yes, it's okay to mortgage everything we got to make an unsecured loan to the Bear Center, because we are both going to work hard to make it a, a success. And then, well, that gets into the second story. She demonstrated how hard she was willing to work when the place was uh, getting toward done. I mean, the, the floor was, the tile was on the floor. And all of a sudden, there was a, a, a problem with the excavation outside. It directed all the meltwater that spring into the bear center. It was flowing in the doors, and and uh, when we came in here and found several inches of water covering the floors, uh, the whole floor of this place, uh, we didn't know what to do. Together, we worked all night. Well, I wore out about 2 a.m. and went home and went to bed. Donna kept working, and uh, I came back in the morning. And uh, and we we did more. 
That's what's one of the advantages of having a wife ten and a half years younger than me. She's got more endurance. <laughs> anyway, it was amazing, and uh, we got and the excavator changed the slope of the land outside. It's never happened again, but uh, that was a challenge. Holy mackerel! Can we hear her side of that? Don, do you have a side to that, uh, oh. starting at the Bear Center? Is it different? Oh, well, not too much different. It, that was the start of my career as a janitor here. I had two careers, janitor and gardener. So I had never done any of the janitor work before for a commercial sure. place. So that was interesting, trying to figure out what to do with the floors. And you have to put seven coats of wax on the floor. And we had just finished, Sharon Johnson and I had just finished it, and it's really tedious work. And then the flood, and oh, we were just heart sick, and we thought the floor was ruined. But we got the water up fast enough, we had big fans, and so everything was good. The floor was saved, all was turned out well. And at that time, all the exhibits we had fit into the children's cub room. That's how few we had. Can you believe that? Wow. Yeah, everything we had. We had to move it into the cub room because that was higher. Yeah, nothing back here. So, yeah. Yeah. Nothing. Oh. So, uh, it was, <laughs> yeah. So then, well, we didn't we didn't uh, have the money really to hire a, a janitor, and it's not the kind of work you can ask volunteers to do, you know. And so Donna said, "I'll do it." So every week she was here, you know, waxing and mopping and uh, sweeping, and uh, just and the toilets, doing the toilets, doing everything that. Uh, that we now hire people thanks to lily pad support lily fan support you know and so and uh yep well i grew up with five brothers and i knew this is going to be a project you have to have clean bathrooms if you have dirty bathrooms no one wants to come back so 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 I figured out from catalogs what to put in there. Some mistakes, but then we eventually bought very um, bi biogenic or what do you biodegradable. say? Biodegradable um, supplies so to clean everything. And I'm really proud of that that we use very good supplies and don't pollute. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So anyway, thank you, honey, and. Uh, and we've been a team, and and I uh, love you, and I appreciate it. And so that's all I know about that. Well, I happened to see when he was looking at Donnie, he didn't even blink. So that, to me, in body language means you're very, very sincere in what you just said. You know, in a body language reader that I am, you are very solid on that one. That's a nice moment to have. It really is. Um, but, uh, you know, we talked last year about memorable experiences. We may have some new people on here, and we always ask you what you think it was the funniest time that you can remember that you had with Lynn, Dr. Rogers, the funniest time that you two have had together. And I know it was a really good time that she talked about last time, but can you? I'll give you a moment to think about it, but Lynn, I know you have one too with you and Donna. You had a, a funny moment that you've had in your life that you can remember? Well, the funniest, the funniest times are when we almost got divorced, really. <laughs> 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 and, and, then, <laughs> and then thinking back on it, you know, it, it makes quite a story. <laughs> Oh, I think I've told it before, but you know, like when I was 
that we wanted you to stampede the buffalo, and, and you wouldn't do, you wouldn't stampede the buffalo for a picture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And when I wanted you to poke the alligator so he would look right for a for a picture, and uh, you wouldn't do it. And <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, right. <laughs> Oh, 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 terrible stuff. I mean, and then the, the time when when I climbed a tree to get a picture, and then an official came along and says, "Get down out of that tree." Uh, and then I, he said, uh, "Which one of these cars is yours?" Oh, I shouldn't tell this. I lied and said that car where an old man had just got out of his car and was starting on a little little teeny walk. And by the time the police got there, we would be gone, and they would be questioning him, why did you climb that tree? <laughs> it was terrible. And so we got in the vehicle. Honey, drive. Drive like mad. Turn lots of corners. I'll hide under the dashboard. <laughs> <laughs> and so oh, this is terrible. What am I doing? Anyway, it was uh and she she drove and we found a really nice place to take pictures of bluebirds. Nice. And so <laughs> Oh, oh, oh I already had thought of one, but Go ahead. Oh. But and that is that is why I prayed Oh, Lord, please make it really busy so we can't go on any more vacations. And so I got an answer to my prayer. Cause, and now I'm praying. Oh, well, well, maybe a couple vacations. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Well, you're well I, said, I said, we'll see how it goes. I'll tell you the next prayer if I want to go or not. <laughs> so... So, I remember we finally took a vacation out west somewhere, I forget where, and he's got his usual vehicle, and he said, let's just go up this mountain. Yeah. So, he kept driving and driving, and it, the roads got worse and worse, and he said, oh, I'm not worried, yeah, we can, I usually get through everything in this car. We got up there, and I forget how we went into a crevice or we got stuck really bad up on the top of a mountain where no one was it was just an old logging road or something so here we were stuck and we didn't have any equipment of course no equipment in the car Camera. <laughs> <laughs> did you use that to oh, I don't know how you got the car up but <laughs> Somehow I found rocks, and I and the wheel, the wheel that was not touching anything. I piled rocks in there, and somehow uh, we ended up able to drive it out. But in carrying the big, pretty big boulders, I hurt my back, and uh, and it was swelling up worse and worse. And I got in the vehicle. You drove, and then we we found a. At the bottom of the mountain, a picnic table. I just got out and writhed around on it and tried to get my back right. And anyway, it's not that funny a story. <laughs> well, I think it is. I remember it though. And, and, and you know, I guess that didn't sound too unusual for a relationship. I mean, how many wives, you know, my wife would poke an alligator's eye, and I'm sure she'd heard buffalo for me or whatever you were calling it, stampeding buffalo. No, she wouldn't. But <laughs> that's got to be normal stuff, don't you think? And going up. <laughs> I mean, I have rolled with Lynn, and I would, I do have some stories that I could tell too, but I'm not gonna. But I'm sure that you could too, and you could also. But you know, the funny part of it is, is you've been married how many years now? Thirty-six. Thirty-six years. Did you hear that? Congratulations on thirty-six years. Yeah. And. Think of all the neat things you have done. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've done some pretty neat things. What's the neatest thing you've done? 
Well, I think this is a culmination of all his information here, yeah. and that is incredible. I really, this building is wonderful, and I give him the credit because I remember before it was even built, he had designed everything that he wanted here and knew kind of what, out, you know, outlay of the building he needed, and, and there was some um, twerking of the plans, but... I, I'm amazed. I think it's just wonderful how he's got it so easy flowing and handicapped accessible and and the parking lot is really good for parking and information is great and if he ever gets done with it then making signs and all then yeah, you know, there, yeah a lot more to go. Yeah. Yep. And uh yep. And this this new part turned out so much better than I originally envisioned. It was it was input from a number of people and uh, we added this and that and and uh, people donated things and, uh, and so now how do we bring the old bear center that I thanks to, to Donna giving me credit so adequately designed that we want to bring it up to this standard now. Now we, when we see uh, what could happen. And uh, so that's uh, what the focus is for the money from Give Men. It's uh, how do we improve education, make it more kid friendly. And then uh, what I haven't said in an update yet is how do we make the front of the building more attractive so that the tens of thousands, actually hundreds of thousands of people that drive by on the highway, uh, so we are in a position to take advantage of a really good location here where we can be seen from the highway to get more people in the door. And that conversation is to be continued at the 9 o'clock hour. Uh, we'd really like to continue that and really beat them on some questions. We're going to actually pin down uh, some of the times he's going to have things done. We're going to set a schedule for him um, hour by hour each day on how much he's going to get done. We're going to build a process for him. And, uh, you know, he's a very process-driven guy when somebody's driving him. Uh, right, Kathy and Judy? I mean... food for the reptiles and amphibians and uh, could you just talk about the monarchs and, and how you helped in that and actually you really took that and grabbed it I mean it was really a great program it was very popular could you, could you talk about that for a second um, sure a little bit I was happy to find caterpillars in my home garden and so captured them and when they were a little bit bigger then brought them in here and we raised them here which is really fun for the people to see the caterpillar growing and to find out what it looks like and then give information about the butterflies and Uh, several people were here just at the time that the caterpillar made a chrysalis and then when the chrysalis hatched that was always just amazing amazing to watch the chrysalis forming and amazing to see the butterfly hatch out of the chrysalis and I hope we can do that again this next year because we planted flowers here to hopefully to encourage um, caterpillars and and I'll bring some in from home in case you know we don't get any here but but it was so much it was very interesting for people to see they would flock around there and I had never seen it either so it was exciting for me and you banned some in the release, yeah right? we did yes go ahead and talk about that how you yep about that. we we learned from um, well the internet tells you and then there are there were some talks in town about how to do this so we have these little tiny stickers and they don't hurt the butterfly's flight at all or the wing movement or anything. So you could just attach that on the outside of the wing and um, then they will track the butterflies wherever they land. I don't know how many will make it to Mexico, but 
if someone finds a butterfly that's tagged, they will call in with the number and then they can track to see how far they go from here because we're really far north and there's so many stages in that butterfly world but the ones that hatch up here go all the way towards Mexico. It should go to Mexico but we just don't know how many make it. So it's, it's interesting. I don't want to cut you off, but <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. But um, but I remember uh, all of a sudden you were into monarch butterflies and so excited about it that you were on Amazon buying all the books and then you got connected with the Xerxes Society, which is a nationwide organization uh, promoting that kind of thing. And was that? Monarch Watch, and then you would uh, talk to the people there and then get information, have me call them for more information, and, uh, and this, this became quite a big thing. And, and you saw the interest that resulted from it, so I congratulate you again on that. They say, behind every great man there's a great woman. But uh, I'm not saying I'm great. I'm just struggling to do what I can do. But but I do have a great woman. But <laughs> yeah, are we talking about somebody else, right? Yeah. But no, no. I I know they say that, but I don't mean I don't mean me. But you are. Somebody else. <laughs> we got uh, we got we got to ask Sharon if she's got a question for you too. Well, I don't, I don't really have a question. Um, I've been here since dirt, you know, uh, when the walls went up and um, watched it grow. And um, I'm excited for the new phases to come into play. And um, I'm just hoping that uh, once um, a little bit more gets done, that we have something new to look forward to. And um, that might be another little critter to be added to our collection here of bears. Well, we have tried to get a bear because uh, we knew we needed one. We wanted a playmate for Holly. Well, thank goodness she found Lucky and that worked out. But uh, that's, that's kind of a downer story. I, you know, I hate to tell it. I mean, how the DNR uh, tried to keep us from getting it. Uh, the, the Attorney General said the DNR had no right to do that. And uh, and how it turned out with the DNR working behind the scenes to kill the deal. So, but we're still looking. We still want to have another bear. We're looking for the right bear, a bear that uh, is socialized so that we can work with it, and uh, uh, but is non-releasable because we don't want to take anything away from nature. So it's um, it's hard to find the right bear. But I know that uh, you'll do the best job you possibly can, and your ears and eyes are always open. I know that for sure. You don't sit still. You do not sit still. Not too often. I mean, as far as moving forward on things, this is a, this is proof right here. And I think that you guys would both agree that we're sitting in an area right now that uh, without the Give to the Max program in different things, we wouldn't be here. I mean, last year at this time, this was not here. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, yeah the wonderful thing, and uh, and I say this every time, is that all of a sudden in 2010, a little bear was born, Hope, that we learned that we named the Hope Learning Center after. It brought so many people together. All of a sudden, there were volunteers. People wanted to help, and uh, with that help. From Lily fans, so much more has happened than otherwise would have been possible. And when it came to the uh, Give Men, uh, it's just been a major boost. And so, uh, and oh, I remember so many things where it was their giving to expand bear education that made such a difference. That's where we are again. Any final comments? 
Well, I am thankful for the volunteers and the educators and everybody that has a part of this. I remember seeing the kids in the ecology hall here looking at the snakes and the, the education people were showing them and people that were afraid of snakes, they would get them to touch the snake and and they'd show them the fish and say fun things about them and it was so wonderful. So thank you to every one of you that has helped in any way because you've made a big difference in the whole Ecology Bear Center. You know, I just want to say thanks to both of you. I know it's from everybody here I'm, I'm speaking that uh, without you two and the drive that you had to get at this place, even even the property for the place, and even the thought that you had, Lynn, years ago, uh, the bears wouldn't have a home here, and Ely wouldn't have a bear center if it wasn't for, for you guys. It really wouldn't. I mean, it, it starts with a dream. It starts with a vision. And, you know, you can tell me all you want about your humbleness, but the bottom line is the bear center and the people that are at this bear center and all the volunteers out there, none of us would be here today if it wasn't for a vision that you had, a twinkle, about what to do. You know, and that's really how I feel about it, and you get to say something at 9 o'clock. So I'm going to leave him speechless, so he's got a lot to think about when we get to that point. Because we do have to move on here, because we are going to be with uh, Dr. Rogers at 9 o'clock. And uh, right now we're at 827, and uh, we'll be excited to uh, get with him. And right now uh, we've got the wonderful world of electronics, and we're being told how we have to have you sit next time. So see how nice things are? I just love it. There you go. Yeah, how'd you know? You know? How do you do? <laughs> it's just amazing, ain't it? The technology we got today. But uh, again, we want to say thank you out there, and we want to let you know that we're going to be here till midnight tonight. And Sharon's doing really well over there. Uh, she's got a back brace on keeping her neck up so that you don't tip down. I haven't seen any drool coming out of her yet. Judy and I got an inside bet on how long she's going to last. That's not true, but I just thought I'd throw that in. But again, we have a 1 o'clock extremely special event that you need to make sure that you tune into. 1 o'clock. Please don't forget. And we'll see you in about uh, the half hour. And we'll be excited to see you, and we'll give you some updates. Thank you, and have a great day.